My name is Austin Edmiston, I'm the Assistant Director for Astronomy here at the Observatory. I'm Fiona Jones, and I am a graduate student at the School of Information on the Library of Science track, and I'm a history docent here at the Detroit Observatory. I'm Samuel Mato, I'm a junior studying Physics and Astronomy with a minor in Business, and I am an Astronomy docent here. I'm Alicia Chavez, I'm one of the History docents here. My name is Jonathan, and I'm an Astronomy docent here. And my name is Jennifer, and I'm also an Astronomy docent. So, my name is Sophia. I am an International Studies and History double major. I'm a senior here, and I'm a history docent here at the observatory. I'm Jane Heckendorn. I am a history major, and I'm a docent here. So, we give walking tours as well as just like being here to answer any questions that anybody has. We got the observatory built, as I said, in 1854. It was part of our first president, Henry Philip Tappan's plan to create Michigan as a research institution that was actually adding to the sort of academic corpus. American universities were based on what's called the recitation model or the English model, which is where you had a professor, but your whole like class was just reading a book and saying it to your professor and like that was it. Now obviously nowadays Michigan is very proud of their research institution um, status and so that actually came about because of our first president. The person who wrote the book on spherical astronomy, the person who was in the room when Neptune was discovered was the one teaching your classes and teaching you how to use the telescope, how to do the math on asteroids that he was discovering with his own eyes. My first director, which is over here, comes Brunoff. He's kind of a character. He um, was terrible with money, so he asked the Board of Regents really nicely to make him a house because he couldn't afford his house, and they did. And he was knighted by the Ottoman Empire. He once passed a student who did not survive the term. We have the old building we are in right now. Uh, there used to be a connection, and then this was the student observatory. It opens up a lot of interesting discussions on like historic preservation and the building history which I really love. Actually, in the early days, U of did have some women astronomers that came through here. Um, one of the most prominent, my personal favorite to talk about. Super interesting woman. Um, they called her Doc Losh, and she was really, like, she had like, these two nicknames on campus. One was as um, the people's astronomer and um, UM's biggest football fan. She did play a pretty big role in um, making astronomy a little bit more accessible to the public, and, um, actually played a really big role in preservation of the observatory as well. If it weren't for a lot of the work that she was doing, this whole building could have potentially gotten torn down. This telescope specifically was purchased with personal funds from uh, Henry Walker, who was a railroad lawyer from Detroit. It was built in Germany and Berlin by the History and Martins Workshop. My favorite part of the observatory is the Moon and Circle Telescope. Um, it's my favorite because I think it has the coolest history. It's got a really long and interesting history. Um, the telescope upstairs is precise to about two fingers held at arm's length, um, but this machine can actually measure the width of your hair from across a football field. Because in the 1850s, there were no time zones, everybody kind of looked at the sun and guessed what time it was, which is not very uh, precise at all, and it caused a lot of issues for the railroad industry. Um, and so the 19th century solution was a machine like this. This telescope in the 1870s actually told time for most of the state of Michigan and parts of sort of northern Indiana and Ohio, um, notably with the exception of Ann Arbor, did not subscribe to telescope time. She went down State Street and crossed the road, you'd have to change the time on your watch by about 15 minutes just because Ann Arbor City. My favorite exhibit here is probably the chronograph over there. I just think it's like so cool that we have something like that and it's really fascinating to me that they were doing something like that in the 1850s. We would track a star across the field of view and every time it crossed one of these points, it would send an electrical impulse to like where you see those little carrots um, and then they would calculate what time it was. And that's why we had all these different other instruments all around you, which would basically make sure that you could pick the best out of the telescope by being in the room. Outside of this room, this telescope cannot function. My favorite part of it personally is the Henry Fitz Telescope, just because it's a, such a huge piece of history here at the University of Michigan. Also, it's just a really big telescope, and those are very cool. <laughs> 
Yeah, I would have to agree. I also like Henry Fitz the best. Um, I think it's the most interactive, which is always fun. My favorite exhibit by far is the Henry Fitz telescope upstairs. It's it's just a really good telescope and it gives you one of a kind sights for the night sky because it's so old that you can see the old uh, character when you're looking through the telescope. This was the telescope that our second director, James Watson, used to find 21 asteroids back in the day, which is about 21-22% of all known asteroids. And the rate at which he found those asteroids was the best among all humans. His rate of finding asteroids was only beaten when we had computers coming to the game. So you would just memorize what the sky looked like and see if something changed. Yeah, this is how the telescope moves. If you look up, you see, oh, maybe the dog is going to be in the way. Uh, the dog that currently sits on iron train tracks, which we can move with the help of the pulley here. Also, if you can kind of, you probably kind of tell, it's really narrow. It only just fits the lens in it. So we have to move the dome a lot more often than you would if the dome set was wider. more people at U of M like knew that this was a place they could go to. And it's here. Uh, like I would love for people to come and check it out. That would be really cool. I want people to know that we are doing tours every yeah. Friday so they come. When I tell people, hey, I work at the Detroit Observatory, they think it's in Detroit. It is actually not in Detroit. It is by Alice Lloyd right here on campus. The reason it's named the Detroit Observatory is to honor the uh, the earlier donors of, that were from Detroit that made sure that the observatory exists in the first place. Also, I really wish people knew the observatory like existed and was super influential and they could have a lot of really, really fun interactions with it, like on campus today, just kind of, you know, in that big block on Friday where they probably don't have classes. Uh, the persons here have their own little facts and tidbits they like to talk about the observatory. So when you take different kinds of tours with different docents, you get different experiences out of the tour because they focus on different facts about the observatory. We're open all the time. I mean, we really run through most of the year. We're closed for some of the obvious holidays, but we're open most Fridays. So you're always welcome. It's always free. Registration's free. The talks are free. Even some of our workshops that we've got working on are free. And sometimes we're observing with the telescopes, and sometimes we're not. But when we're not, we're also doing things that we can't do when we're observing. So we try to always make it special. And I think uh, I want people to know that there's something special here that they can enjoy no matter what.